You guys seem to really enjoy the last tips and tricks video that I uh, uploaded on the channel. It had a lot of positive feedback on it, so uh, I decided to make another one of those filled with random stuff that I either forgot to add in the first video or stumbled upon among the way while playing the game. Uh, so yeah, first up, I want to talk about critical hit range on weapons. Yeah, not critical hit chance, not critical hit damage, but critical hit range. Uh, because in the Division 2, all weapons now have a certain range from targets where they can crit. It differs per weapon class and even per weapon in some cases. Uh, but for example, most SMGs can only land critical hits from 0 to 30 meters. Uh, shotguns can only land critical hits from 0 to 20 meters. And assault rifles only from 10 to 45 meters. If you want to know the full crit range for every single weapon... Uh, because, as I said, it doesn't always go per weapon class, there are some outliers. You can actually check out this sheet made by the data miners. Uh, I'll link it below in the description. Uh, but yeah, what the critical hit range means is that if your target is either too far away or too close to you, in a lot of cases, then that means that you cannot land critical hits. So, indeed, when I'm shooting my friend here with an assault rifle and he is about 10 to 45 meters away from me, which is, <laughs> I guess, a pretty big range, I'll get the occasional critical hit. Because, you know, I don't get a lot of crits because I only have 10% on this build when I tested it. But the moment that I get closer than 10 meters with my assault rifle, I simply cannot land critical hits anymore. Which means that assault rifles just simply aren't the best for close quarter combat anymore like they were in the Division 1, because you lose all your crit, basically. And this is also why I didn't want to straight up compare uh, the best weapons of each weapon category up against each other in my weapons comparison video, because uh, right now for the Division 2, different weapon classes are just better for different situations at different ranges. And you can actually see this back in the game as well. You don't have to remember it, uh, because if you look at your reticle in the middle, you can see that when a target is in critical hit range, you have some very small and very tiny elements of the of the reticle that will turn orange instead of being gray. Uh, some of you might have noticed this while playing and didn't really know what it meant. Well, this is what it means. When it's orange, you can crit. When it's not orange, when it's gray, you cannot crit. So yeah, that's critical hit range for you. All right, next up, let's talk about the deflector drone. Because remember when I said in my uh, sniper one-shot build video that the deflector drone was a little bit buggy? As, you know, sometimes it wouldn't work, and even when it worked, it wouldn't always block the sniper bullet. I didn't really know what was going on with that, and I assumed it was a bug, but it seems that I was wrong. And it's actually an intended feature. A developer who works at Massive, that goes by the name as uh, Frederick Thailander, has actually confirmed on Twitter that for PvP, the deflector drone has a chance to deflect bullets. But it doesn't always do it. Uh, that's a little unfortunate for players up against, you know, the one-shot build. But that still means that uh, the deflector drone is pretty effective versus high RPM weapons. Uh, from personal testing, it has about a 25% chance to deflect an incoming bullet. Uh, but it could be a little bit higher or a little bit lower as well, as we just tested it a few times, and it was around 25%. So just keep that in mind next time you use the deflector drone for PvP, that no matter what, you're still going to take some damage. You're not completely immune to damage until the drone runs out. Uh, it just blocks a little bit of damage and that's it. Now here's an old trick from The Division 1 uh, that I probably should have included in the first video but didn't think about it at the time. Uh, but it's with fire grenades and I just want to show you that uh, fire grenades, they can actually set players and NPCs on fire in a 360 radius around them, uh, above, below, uh, even on the vertical axis, regardless if there is any cover or height differences. This means that if somebody is behind cover, you can actually fire grenade in front of the cover, and then the players behind the cover will still burn. Uh, it also works around corners. If somebody is around the corner, you can put a fire grenade uh, next to the wall, I guess, and then even if the grenade doesn't have direct line of sight with the player, the player will still get burned. Uh, and again, it also works uh, with heights. So if a player is a little bit elevated or a little bit below the grenade, or maybe even up an entire level of you, uh, the fire grenades can oftentimes still burn them. Although the example here on screen is a, is a little bit extreme. That's probably the absolute maximum you're gonna see this work. So yeah, it's just something to keep in mind that the fire grenade, it does damage in a 360 radius around it, and it's not just a flat circle. And this only applies to the fire grenade, by the way, because the flashbang, 
Uh, and the normal grenades, they do actually have their effects blocked when there is a piece of cover in between the player and the grenade. The flashbang still has a little bit of an effect on screen, but the, the, the grenade that damage players, the frag one and the concussion grenade, uh, the full effect of those will be blocked even if there's something as small as a little tree uh, in between the grenade and the player. Which is uh, pretty funny to look at. Oh, I'm behind this tree. I guess your grenade's not going to do anything. Uh, but this is actually a common mechanic in games. A lot of games have this, so it's not too weird. Then, I want to talk about two skills that I've been using quite a bit lately. Uh, and then I'm actually going to make a build around the moment that World Tier 5 drops. I'm talking about the Booster Hive and the Cam Launcher Healer Mod. Uh, and first up, let's talk a little bit about the Booster Hive. I think this is probably one of the best skills for PvP because it gives you a 20% movement speed increase, which allows you to do some pretty crazy bullet dodging, I guess. It makes you faster while ADSing, it makes you faster while hip firing, it makes you faster while sprinting, you're just 20% faster. And that doesn't sound like a lot, but it's, it's pretty huge. But did you know that you can drop this Booster Hive on the floor? and then instantly destroy it manually to get the lowest cooldown possible, and then still have the whole team get the full effect of it. That's something I didn't know when I just started playing, but I figured that out pretty fast, I guess. The way this works is, is that if you place the booster hive on the floor and teammates are in the area, it shoots these things up in the air, and then they hit the player, and then after they hit the player, the player gets the boost. Uh, and that boost that you get, that's 20 seconds long upon receiving it. But if you place the booster hive and then those flies fly out, I don't know what to call them really, you can instantly destroy the booster hive after that because the flies will still connect with the players. The players will still get the 20 second boost and everything will go on as usual, even if the booster hive itself is no longer activated. So this is way better than just leaving it on the floor, waiting for it to be destroyed and then getting the full cooldown and waiting for the duration to be over as well. And this is actually something that we've been doing at the start of every skirmish match. I already mentioned this in a previous video, but I didn't mention that we instantly destroy the boost drive. So when the skirmish game starts, uh, somebody drops the boost drive on the floor, then everybody just, well, everybody starts pretty close to each other. Everybody basically runs through it. The guy with the booster hive instantly destroys it to get the cooldown as fast as possible. And then the whole team still has that 20% movement speed, uh, which is pretty good in skirmish because it allows you to get in the map way faster than the opponent, unless they're doing the same thing. So that's the boost drive. But now I want to talk about something that I found equally as interesting, which is the cam launcher. And, and what's interesting about this is that uh, there is a talent that you can get on gear, which increases skill duration by 20%. So if you put a hive on the floor and you have this talent, it's going to be able to stay on the floor for 20% more time. Why is this interesting with the cam launcher? Well, because it also increases the amount of time that the, the cloud that the cam launcher shoots uh, remains on the floor, which is very surprising because uh, in the Division 1, skill duration only applied to deployable skills, and technically I don't think that this cloud of healing counts as a deployable because you can't really shoot it. I guess you can't really target it. It's just there. It's just like a projectile almost, I think. Uh, but regardless, it also works on this healing cloud. Uh, and because of that, you can stack this skill duration talent and you can have these healing clouds stay on the floor for like 12 seconds each. And every second, they still heal for the same amount. So in fact, with skill duration, you can actually increase the healing that you can get from the cam launcher by a drastic amount. Because remember, the, the cam launcher actually stacks with itself. So you can spam it a few times uh, to get faster healing. We already talked about that as well. So what I'm picturing here is to get a mod for more charges, let's say 5 plus charges or something to get a total of 8. Then we get some mods for increased radius on it, so we basically have a, a cloud the size of a support station, almost. Uh, and then get some cooldown reduction to get the charges back extra fast. And then you just use the booster hive to get the 20% movement speed, and you just run around your teammates just popping these things over and over. Each of them is going to stay on the floor for 12 seconds, and if your teammates run through it, they're going to get some crazy, crazy healing. 8 move 2.0? Question mark? Maybe. Maybe not. We'll see when World Tier 5 rolls around and the skill mod requirements are going to get fixed and they're going to do some, some other things with like balance changes. We'll see how strong this can get, but this is definitely going to be my passion project for the upcoming week, so to speak. Oh, and also another interesting thing. The cam launcher doesn't burst heal yourself, but it actually burst heals your teammates if your teammates are in the radius the moment that you activate it. So when you have a really big radius and you can just spam this over and over, you're constantly going to burst heal your teammates 
in addition to the crazy healing over time. So that's another plus. Just make sure that you do not heal your opponents in the dark zone, because another thing that I also figured out is that uh, for some reason, even if you are rogue and your opponent is not, and even if you're both fighting each other, it even works in skirmish, you can actually heal your enemies with the cam launcher. I guess the healing nanobots have no preference of who to heal. They even heal skill objects from players and yourself as well. I'm not sure if all of that is intended, but uh, either way, I find it pretty silly that uh, your enemies can just run in really close to you, run around you and get healing from you as well. To finish up the video, I have one last tip for you, only for PvE though, uh, and only versus the Black Tusk, so it's, it's pretty specific, that's why I saved it for last. You know those helicopters that the Black Tusk dropped the NPCs from? Well, those helicopters don't actually have hitboxes. So uh, you can shoot the NPCs through the helicopters as soon as they spawn in them and kill them through the chopper before they even hit the ground. As long as the Black Tusk is in mid-air, they cannot shoot back. So if you have enough damage and if you do this fast enough, if you start to kind of know where the spawns of the helicopters are in each mission, uh, it is easy, easy clears. Just, just make sure you have the damage and have your teammates shooting at the helicopter as well uh, if you're not playing solo. And that's pretty much all that I have to share today. I'm thinking about uploading a video on gear next with uh, the eight of the spreadsheets that the data miners have put together because gear actually works in a whole different way than it did in the Division 1. So uh, I guess stay on the lookout for that. And as always, I'll see you guys later. Or like they say, in the Netherlands, see you later.